radiant light kind of feels like it's um, shifting gears a little bit. I was thinking kind of like just always level up. After Zen Buddhism has helped me, what's next? You're not meant to make ripples like in, mm. in your life. Well, if they step into that aura, that's a danger zone for them and a controlled environment for you. Did you choose to take the red pill? Was there ever a choice? Oh, hello there. I'm Jimmy Shuka, alongside Albert Chalmers and Sean Goodman. And this is Radiant Light, episode 30, Zen Diaries 4. Stay with us all the way until the end of this episode, where we've got a major announcement regarding phase 4 of Radiant Light and a monumental shift in the Dow. Enjoy the episode. Hello and welcome to Radiant Light, episode 30, Zen Diaries 4. This is the episode where Albert and I pull back the curtain and update you guys on what's been going on in our daily lives and of course, how Zen Buddhism applies. If you enjoy our content, do remember to give us a like, subscribe or a follow. We really, really appreciate that. Albert Chalmers, my friend and colleague, how are you doing today? Good, you? Yeah, very good, thanks. Can't wait to get into this. Nice. So, radiant light kind of feels like it's um, shifting gears a little bit, so to speak. I mean, I feel like I'm shifting gears. Um, I would say the direction that we're going now is going to be a little bit more current affairs, a little bit more modern and dare I say, a little bit edgier, perhaps? Right. I was thinking kind of like just always level up, you know what I'm saying? Radiant Light was always founded on Zen Buddhism and like a, a spiritual path. And we're always going to come back to that. But now we're kind of talking about things that are happening in, in this present day. Yeah, I was thinking... If you integrate the Zen philosophy in a modern day context, it's almost how it's, how it's supposed to be used. It's not supposed to be like always just thinking about the past, but I think Buddhism is heavily rooted in the past, obviously, like all religions. Yeah. But of course, the Zen mindset is something you can use anywhere, anytime, any place. Yeah, absolutely. And we've given some great examples of how we use the Zen mindset on previous Zen Diaries episodes as well. Let me just take it all the way back to episode two. In episode two, we discussed the Buddha's Four Noble Truths, suffering that happens in life. And I personally gave a, an example of how Zen Buddhism helped me through my divorce and how I came stronger through the other side of it. But I don't know, for me now, and in light of this kind of shifting gears that we're talking about, I just feel like I've, I've done that now, you know, I've been through the suffering, I meditated a lot through that phase, and I've, I've come out the out other side of it, and I just want to get back to just being Jimmy again, yeah. you know, like, and I don't want to feel like a hypocrite as I'm doing it, you know. I want to go out at the weekends. I want to have a couple of drinks, have a laugh with the boys or, or whatever it is that we happen to be doing. But like, I don't know, to sit here on the podcast and only talk about Buddhist practices that happened, say, thousands of years ago, it feels a, a little bit hypocritical, maybe. Like, or I'm feeling like I'm torn in two directions and I just want to kind of bring this all together and integrate it into one. Cool. A fusion of your own make, making kind of... Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like your own persona, right? Your own philosophy and mindset and everything together. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I get that for sure. 
Taoism has helped me, like I've said previously, become so much more flexible in my thinking. Like when I'm at work, if somebody says something that I don't like or that I don't agree with, I'm less inclined now to just kind of think with my ego and straight in and try to express why like I'm right and perhaps the other person is wrong. I've learned to be a bit more fluid, you know, give back off, let this person have their space, let them do their way, gather my thoughts and then come and talk about it again. And I feel like that's something that gets a little bit more respect from the other side. And what I'm saying is I can do that in a way that's like a bit more in keeping with who Jimmy Shuka really is rather than kind of like pretending that I'm going to go live in a tree or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, like what's next after Zen Buddhism has helped me. What's next? I think Buddhism and Zen, it loses some power when you talk about it in a sense. How do you mean? Like when you're just chilling and you're just being Zen, vibes just kind of do the talking for you. And then once you're like trying to talk about it, it just like snuffs it down a little bit. You're just like mm. trying to explain the Tao. Why are you going to... You... Great for us doing a podcast about this. Well, that's, yeah. That's, I think you've proven that point, right? Mm. You can't explain the Tao, but once you start to feel it and notice it, then it's all over the place. Everything in the podcast and life in general, right? Oh, absolutely. It's yeah. The fabric of, it's like the code in the matrix, right? Yeah. Yeah. We... um we talked about that on episode four, The Way of Water, how you can kind of just feel what's going on around you at all times. And rather than just express things logically, you kind of get a sense of what's of what's going on. True. Read the room a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, this stuff just comes up in our conversations anyway, so there's no point trying to force it, right? It just happens when we're talking about life on our daily, whatever's going on in the mind, in the reality, it just comes up in the conversations. Yeah, sure. If you enjoy our content, don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to our YouTube channel, as well as whichever platform you listen to your podcasts on. And you can even follow us on Instagram too. Radiant underscore light underscore podcast. And you can always reach out to us at Radiant Light Podcast One. That's the number one at gmail.com. What examples do you have, Albert, in your daily life? How the Taoism and feeling the moment has For me, helped you? Well, I can start off by saying there's a Zen quote that I kind of use as my mantra. Mm -hmm. Not maybe consciously, but. I've absorbed the subconscious because uh, the quote is you're not meant to make ripples like in mm. in your life. You're I remember you telling me about you that. that. You did. You told me that. A while. I'm sure that that one was off air, I believe. Yeah. Been saving it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You saved it for today. Yeah. It's kind of what I go back to, like my center in a mm. sense, because I always... My personality often gets ahead of me and in a way that's good because I don't, I think to overthink is a death sentence, the, yeah. what they call analysis paralysis. Absolutely. Like yeah. that stifles the flow of energy, which is mm. in Taoism, you want to control the flow, not control, that's the wrong word, but like go with the flow of energy. Yeah. Go with the natural flow that is happening around the flow you. Is happening. And, um, Oftentimes, I'll just be like going with the flow and then something will happen mm. and I kind of like, no, this is like, they're matrixing me a bit. I want to like create my own destiny or whatever. Then you have to like make a few ripples, but sometimes that's where the compromises have to happen in my life. I don't know how else to explain it, but I try not to make ripples by going through interaction to interaction. I don't like go out of my way to offend people and do that because I don't see that as beneficial. But I do put myself out there and say, this is who I am. L take it or leave it, you know? Yeah, yeah. That ripple quote that you've said to me, that really does consciously go through my mind when I'm in a working environment. Like that previous example I just gave where I'm at work, I feel myself 
getting in a potentially confrontational situation where I don't agree with what the other person is saying or doing or how they want to go about it. I do consciously think oh, like, if I just get on my high horse about this now, it will cause ripples. Mm. So like you say, I move like water, I focus on something else. And when I just get a sense that, yeah, like now be, might be a nice time to like reapproach in a more roundabout way, then yeah, that's when I, yeah. well, I strike. It seems like the art of war type tactics. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Which is Chinese as well. I just ordered a copy of that book actually. because then the, the Art of War. The Sun Tzu's Art of War and um, the Book of Five Rings by Miyamoto, Miyamoto Musashi. Well, his complete works, actually. So it's like, those are the two. I like to read the Zen texts when I get a little bit out of line with how I'm supposed to be thinking. Mm. It's just my center kind of. Yeah, it does recenter. Like yeah. Or whatever they do. Mm. A lot of people just pray and then they feel better. I need to like read and learn something more. To dig a little deeper each time to really center. It's like when we said in episode one in the beginning, praying is talking to the universe. Meditating is listening to the universe. I guess what I'm f feeling and sensing from you now is it's kind of like um, to put an extra layer onto that. The combination of of praying and meditating kind of recenters you and puts you in a a right spot to navigate daily life. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's also about humbling yourself. I mean, if you approach philosophy or religion with uh, a know-it-all attitude, you're gonna never gain anything from it. Because if your cup is full. You can't take in new information. That's why they say yeah. empty your cup every time. You learn something new, then you empty the cup. And um, usually, if you re-cleanse your mind, all the important things stick in like a subconscious way. And all the unnecessary things, like we spoke about with Bruce Lee, you, you disregard the things that are not useful. Yeah, absolutely. And what was the part of that phrase that was about retaining? What is essentially your own. What is essentially your own. That's it. Thank you. So speaking of you and essentially being your own and applying the Zen Buddhism to your life, like how do you interact with the matrix? You're conscious of the matrix matrixing you? Yeah, or you... exactly. I mean, it happens everywhere you go, all the time. And it can bring you out of... When you know things are right and then you get sucked into the monotony of it kind of thing. It's not... It's not fun, right? You notice it, but it just like happens so gradually that you let it happen almost. And then you get to a point where you, you're like... Hang on, what, let me just qualify what you're referencing here. It's like the matrix turning you into like what the matrix thinks you should be. and how, it, yeah. yeah. And to bring it back to what you said earlier, sometimes it's good to create a couple of little riffles. And yeah. so is this it's kind of protect, protect your own identity and be who you are? Yeah. There's actually a cool scene in the matrix when Neo absorbs Agent Smith and then like obliterates him and then he like fucking or maybe it's just before that but he like does this Superman Goku type pose and like the mm. entire hallway like bends around him and then it like retracts okay he just like asserting his energy into the universe and like the universe physically has to like make space for him because he's so powerful that's like the true moment where he becomes the one. It's so epic. so epic. I know you love that movie. So, and I know that you saw a lot of meanings behind yeah. the movie as well. So what, what did that kind of mean to you in the context of your life? Like, how do you relate that scene to your personal life? Uh, mostly it's in the sparring or in the gym or whatever. Like, okay when the testosterone starts to max out and you're like pushing yourself to new because mm. your comfort zone is like the bubble and then you're like expanding the bubble by just pure will and strength and discipline and like 
your energy. It's like a super. Okay. Okay. Cool. That's how I. When I'm sparring, I try to like create like my this my area and like it's dangerous. It feels. But I spar with like a controlled mindset. I'm not trying to hurt people. Yeah, but if the opponent kind of steps into that yeah, zone, they're in trouble. Mind. It's like, as, as you're saying this, I can actually, I'm visualizing like a red energy kind of aura, a, yeah. around you. Yeah, and or if they step into that aura, mm -hmm. that's a danger zone for them and a controlled environment for you. Yeah, you can like cool. observe the fire, but like don't dare you touch it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's not the answer I thought you was going to give, actually. Really? Yeah, I thought, I didn't realize we were going to... Were you trying to matrix me? Yeah, I was trying to matrix you, yeah. <laughs> no, I just thought you was going to talk about, like, uh, I don't know, we've spoke about this off camera a little bit, but it's more like a general pathway in life, you know, life decisions you want to take and What's where you want to go. Like, other people are, are always putting what they want on you whereas you've got to send someone like no this is who i am this is the personality that i want to be yeah. in my reality can you speak to that a little or? i've been dealing with that one my whole life kind of because i think everyone does they go through these identity crises or whatever and they try to like mm. as they mature eliminate the things that are unuseful like i said yeah, about, which yeah. is healthy it is mm. part of zen but if you eliminate the things that were getting you to the dance in the first place, a lot of people throw the baby out with the bathwater, in my opinion. Mm. They become adults, and then their personality vanishes into the Matrix. Well, yeah, it's like the Matrix is like constantly giving them this um, depressing information via the news, and they're going to work, wearing their suits and ties, recycling the same procedure, every day and kind of not thinking about who yeah. they want to be it's like been put on to them that you are this it's like almost kind of like the slave mindset in a way that yeah. and we got to break that mindset well that's why we have a dragon ball z t-shirt on my wall right there and it's ironic because i mean look at it it's the most buddhist looking shirt you could <laughs> see right yeah, yeah. But when i was a kid that was my favorite thing ever it was like I went home, I watched Dragon Ball Z, I drew the characters to like push myself. I started martial arts, I did everything mm. to be like that. So I feel like why would I now at 34 stop with that? Yeah, That's like where I gained all my super energy and my powers and from the, in the first place and like created a personality. And then if I just, oh, I'm a, I'm a grown man now. It's, it's like they've put that yeah. on you. And you want to keep your inner child alive, right? Well, that is me. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? In yeah, a, exactly. Yeah. In a sense, in every moment, you're a new person. We're, but we're in transition, yeah. yeah. There's always a continuity. And I feel like, obviously, Naruto and Dragon Ball Z and other things, The Matrix, huge part of just who I am as a per in the way I think. So I don't want to ever eliminate those things what i want to eliminate is all the unnecessary stress and the worrying and all that things that are not zen that's one of those funny things it's like did you choose to take the red pill or was there ever a choice determinism free will all these things these existential things but i feel like it is it, when i'm having fun it's a lot of fun yeah when it's not fun it's really not fun that's how it works we are we just really just pulling back our curtain on day-to-day -day life here yeah yeah like all right yeah if i can just say honestly then like when we've hung out sometimes yeah i see you really up and really happy and then i also see you like not so happy like when you're a bit down about the environment and like zen is supposed to be like yeah i'm I'm not uh supposed to be i'm not affected by the outside external environment i just plainly well, look at it with no judgment it's that but it's also you are the external outside environment too because mm. everything in buddhism is connected right yeah. the entire universe is a universe uni means one mm. so all the things inside our universe or the matrix is one thing but if and when it control you then you're doomed so yeah you yeah yeah to, like assert yourself with the knowledge that you and everything are connected mm. and i guess also on a deeper level then it's like if the vibes around you are bad 
and you are naturally going to be feeling a bad vibe like yeah. that's okay like learn that it's going to come to pass right you're supposed to feel things right mm. it's just not making bad decisions based on those bad feelings well as bruce lee would say don't look feel yeah. or use the force <laughs> yeah right. use the force yeah the vernacular that we're attracted to i feel like i always see this like thread this sort of silver lining in it all like the way we speak, it all is connected in that sense. So therefore the universe is connected. It's just what kind of universe you create within your surroundings. So if you speak a certain way, you act a certain way, you create a certain, you inhabit a certain area in the universe. Same with YouTube, you, you sort of find your niche and then your fans subscribe and then you're like, mm. that's the area we inhabit. You can't inhabit the entire universe simultaneously, but everything's connected. So you just bring in the things you like and create like a vibe this feels like real law of attraction stuff that we're talking about here yeah you, know? you have to believe it for it to work yeah you, you believe it it'll work it's just you've got to believe it for it to work you everything starts with gratitude as well you know being yeah. in a grateful place a positive position one. combined with actions making things work you know Another thing I guess we're trying to look at here in the Radiant Light podcast is this is where we drop the red pill shit. Okay, that is almost all we have time for on today's episode. But as promised, here's a major announcement regarding Phase 4 of Radiant Light. Up until this point, Albert and I have always released the same content on both our YouTube channel as well as our audio-only podcast platforms. But there's been a major shift in the Dow, and going forward, these two platforms will offer completely different products. Our YouTube channel is a place where you guys can go and check out some real radical shit. For example, when it comes to martial arts, Albert's thinking... Don't tell me. Show me. Meanwhile, on our audio-only podcast platforms, that's going to become a place that always has a Zen Diaries type feel to it. So if you guys have grown to like Albert and I, you're feeling our vibe, you want to follow our story, well just head on over to your favourite podcast platform and just Zen out with us. And seeing as this moment appears to be the end of an era, let's finish up with one final Zen proverb. In the end, there are only two things that really matter. How deeply did we love? And how gracefully did we let go of what was not meant to be. So until next time, good night, God bless, and namaste.